All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. Hello, class. I'm Wesley, and the uh, person that I'm going to be speaking about today, and overall in their career, they have uh, won 21 Grammys, uh, 11 BET Awards, um, Rolling Stones uh, added one of his albums to their 40 most groundbreaking albums of all time list, and last year, Time Magazine uh, voted him the number one most influential person of 2015. And my person is Kanye West, and uh, today I would like to uh, highlight the ways he has influenced hip hop culture. Um, I've been a fan of Kanye West since he has released uh, his first album, The College Dropout. Um, I've done three essays and one presentation about him, and I feel like I'm confident enough to uh, explain uh, his life and his albums well. Uh, I'm going to specifically focus on how he's influenced the sound of music by analyzing some of his albums and showcasing the fashion styles that correlate with each of these album releases. Um, so his first album was The College Dropout. It was released in 2003. Um, at the time, um, the biggest rap albums in the years prior were 2001 with Dr. Dre, The Chronic. Um, it was a very gangster, uh, funk sampling time. Uh, it really started the whole gangster rap movement. And uh, in 2002, the most notable album was uh, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Um, this also followed the uh, machismo style of rap and hip hop. And uh, it uh, kept the whole gangster look going. And uh, when Kanye West came on scene, uh, he actually went uh, completely against the mold of what uh, hip hop was sounding like at the time. He used a lot of uh, soul samples, which is when you would uh, get an older song and then you'd use a part of it and license it and then you could use it in your own song. Um, and I have a, a little video comparison to show you what kind of the music was like back then in 2002 and then how it changed to uh, Kanye on 2000. The first one is a 50 cent song in the club. I'm only going to play a short clip. Oh, I Hope you enjoy this new song. <laughs> <laughs> on At My House, it, it didn't play any ads, it just played off the thing. <laughs> Sorry. I made sure that they didn't have ads too. <laughs> It may be a different version. <laughs> so, uh, so this is just a little preview of what the music sounded like, and also if you would like take notice of the fashion that they're wearing. They wore a lot of uh, big baseball jerseys and big hats, big chains. Everything was just their whole clothing was big. <laughs> So it was just a short, you can see I was like real, uh, takes the stereotype of like hip hop rap. And then this I've been working as crazy. Drake and he's discussing Kanye, he says that 
he'd even go as far as to say is he's the most influential person as far as a musician that I've ever had in my life. And the next um, album that I'd like to talk about is uh, 808 and Heartbreak. Um, this came out in 2008. Um, he released two albums prior to this, and they kept the whole soulful sound, and that sound really built up on the radio, and it became normal. And now hip hop had its own gangster setting, and then it had its whole Kanye um, like setting. And 808s and Heartbreak actually destroyed all the work that he had put into making hip hop what he when he first came into it because this had no soul samples. It had straight electronic auto tune rap, um, and it really went against the mold of everything at the time. Um, people credit him with. Uh, creating auto-tune, but that's not true. Complex Magazine said that uh, although it certainly didn't invent auto-tune, for a certain audience, it legitimized it, adapting the form and helping to popularize what is now an ever-present sound in popular music. Um, and then I have a, a short clip again of uh, what this sounded like and how much different it was than his first album.
No one has influenced and changed hip hop in so many different ways like Kanye West has done and will continue to do. Hip hop culture is forever changing and is always waiting on Kanye's next move to see in which direction it will follow. Thank you, class. And that will conclude my speech. Let's see here. Eduardo, what did you think? Um, I really liked your presentation. I thought your visuals were excellent. You showed how um, the different music styles uh, had developed from since 2002 to 2003. And I really liked your description of Kanye West as he uh, doesn't fit in the mold of, of today's rap and hip hop. And uh, what I didn't like is the ads on the videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but overall, I, I, I really, uh, I was entertained with your speech. Uh, you should know how Connie's career has developed over the years. And another negative was that the music was kind of loud, just a little. Uh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll go along with some of those things. I think that, uh, you, you know, the problem with the ad is it just takes us out of the speech for a second. You did the right thing, turn the sound off, but when you turn the sound off, what you might want to do is uh, what they said in the old days, vamp. You know, you got, you got to talk a little bit instead of kind of drawing attention to the fact that we're all sitting waiting. If you had something else to say, some anecdote to interject, some comment about something you talked about earlier, that would be helpful. Then, that, you know, you cover that 20 or 30 seconds that we're waiting for that to get out of the way. That would be okay. That's one of the reasons, by the way, that I suggested using the tube chop is because it usually takes out the ads and you're just getting the section of the video that you want. Uh, and, and that's... Uh, a much more effective way of kind of eliminating those sorts of things. It's a little distraction. Uh, the, the problem is, of course, you're using a site that is got to generate income somehow, and so it's those things are going to be there. Unfortunately, that's not what you want to have. So um, there are ways to get around that, but uh, you always have to figure out a way to cheat it. It wasn't that big a deal. Uh, I did like the way that you presented the music side by side, for instance, as a way to illustrate the differences between the styles that existed at the time and what he was presenting. And then you did the same thing with the clothing, apparel, you know, the fashion sort of thing. I, I like the way that that uh, came across very effectively on the same slide so we could see the two in contrast to one another. I thought that that worked really well. Um, we, don't, <laughs> we don't need the personal greeting for your attention device, uh, just, just, but I, I thought you had some good factual data to get our attention and then kind of a little bit of a reveal of what the subject was. That I thought was much more effective. Um, you've got a very clear thesis statement that you're going to and you kind of preview the material uh, for us also pretty effectively, so I thought that that worked well. Um, I, th I like the fact that you kind of defined some of the musical terms that are being used there, the sampling and the use of the soul sound and uh, auto-tune later on. Uh, you know, everybody knows that uh, Kanye didn't invent auto-tune, Britney Spears did. You know. <laughs> Uh, but you know that she that uh, he used it effectively in creating a different kind of sound. I think uh, we get a sense of that uh, that it's influential. <coughs> um, people who listen to a lot of popular music would probably recognize tunes where that is the case. I know, uh, and maybe everybody in here is all in tune with that sort of thing. I don't listen to a lot of contemporary music, so it's one of those things that I miss out on a little bit. I, I mean, I don't hate it. I 
just don't listen to the radio much anymore and all of my stuff has changed and I'm not, you know, I'm listening to completely different things. But that's why I like the, the music that you included it in there. You've done something that uh, probably would not, I'd have not thought possible. You've made me interested in listening to Kanye West album. So, you know, because I can tell that there is something different about it. I mean, I, my general impression of him is that he's a tool, but that doesn't mean that he's not a, a, an artist. And that sounds to me like something that would be interesting. I, I, I enjoyed the music clips that you had there. I, you know, and I probably would like the soul sampling a little bit better than the auto-tune stuff. So I might go back to that because if I was talking about popular music that was you know, something that I'm interested in, 70s soul music would be what I like, you know, so it sounds like that's, he's got that kind of vibe in those early albums. So I, I might be interested in that sort of thing. Um, the visuals, like I said, I thought worked pretty well. You do a nice job speaking to the audience for the most part. <laughs> you're not dependent on a script. You occasionally look at your visuals to remind you the next thing that you're talking about. And sometimes you get a little enamored in looking at that and, and you're doing a little bit longer instead of turning and talking to us. But that wasn't a lot. It happened occasionally. Most of the time you were doing a good job speaking to us and I thought you seemed quite engaged there. It is a little long on the presentation, 10 minutes and 20 seconds, so you're 25% you know, over your time. Uh, I didn't have anybody keeping time for you and I know that there's a little bit of problem when you don't when you're speaking extemporaneously, the time sometimes runs a little bit differently, but that'll be something that you want to be in control of. Uh, I like the summary at the end of the speech, and just like in the introduction where I'm saying you can leave off the personal introduction, I think you could leave off the part where you say, thank you, and that'll conclude my speech. We don't need that. You've got a good exit line. That's not the exit line that you want to leave. That's a little ham-fisted, drawing attention once again to the fact that we're giving a speech instead of drawing attention to the subject that you just talked about. All right, thank you.